Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we have something very special for you ladies. It's our first episode with two guests representing one business. So we are so delighted to welcome marketing and strategy visionary T.H. Irwin and Emmy-nominated producer and media expert Jessica Klingbaum, who created a media platform for all things divorce. They've both lived it, and so they get it. They bring vetted industry professionals together and ask the questions you don't know to answer. We make the process easier for you to navigate, they say, and to digest and move forward. Real life experts and 42% of the population can help support one another and dispel the stigma of divorce. So I am so excited. I believe that I'm connected through Clubhouse to TH. So yes. I'm so excited to bring you ladies here with me today. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having us. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to start just by asking, I guess I'm going to start with you, TH. If you want to give just a little tiny bit of a backstory about maybe your divorce and what inspired you to start serving other women who are going through that process. And then we'll do the same with Jessica. Jessica and I have led parallel lives all of our lives. <laughs> we separated at the same time because our husbands were cheating on us with other women having long-term extramarital affairs. So at that time, I'm always looking for resources. I'm kind of a troll in the best way possible online. <laughs> And at the time that we separated, we had our attorneys, we had one another, thank goodness, but there was no information out there to support us. This is back in 2008. Hmm. So we continued on with our careers. My divorce took four years. Hers was a hot minute. And she'll tell you more about her situation. Mine was very contentious with a very difficult ex. So I could not create something at that time because it was all consuming for me being a mother of three kids under eight and so on. So fast forward, our careers came to another pivotal point and I revisited this with Jessica. I'm like, I really think that we need to create this because now when you Google, you're only seeing the top 10, half of which are paid. And you don't even know who these people are that you're going to trust your divorce to one of the top three most impactful events in your life. Mm, yeah. And you're going to trust somebody online. So that was the impetus for X experts. We needed a place where we provided vetted information, vetted experts, people we would hire today if we were going through this. And hence the tagline, we've lived it so we get it. We are validating our information. We are validating our experts, you know, with our own opinion. We are not divorce coaches. We are not lawyers. We are two women who know that there is a, a strong need for this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, Jessica, your turn. Tell us a little bit about your hot minute divorce. <laughs> yeah. So as TH said, I mean, we went through them at the exact same time. So, I mean, there's that layer of kind of humiliation when I found out that he had been having an affair, but my divorce was very amicable. I had kind of a vision in my head of what I wanted it to look like at the end for the benefit of my kids. And fortunately, my husband was amenable to pursuing the, the kind of divorce that I had recommended for us. So 
we were so lucky though, TH and I, every day that we were able to talk to each other about all of the nitty gritty details that no one else probably really wanted to hear. What did you talk to your lawyer about today? Did your lawyer tell you this? Did you know that you could do this or that you should do this? We live in different states, so there are nuances, right? State to state, everything isn't exactly the same, but the basics were the same. And we were learning so much from each other every day and we could laugh together. We could cry together. We went through all of the sadness, the darkness, the overwhelm together to come through on the other side so much happier. We have such a positive outlook on everything and everyone that we've spoken to as hard and challenging as it is in the beginning, when you are thinking about getting divorced or are getting divorced, everyone that we've spoken to is so much happier on the other side. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. The grass is greener. So we just wanted to be able to help other people move forward to get to that point when they don't really see it yet. And then like TH said, the resources that we talk to, there are a lot of elements of divorce. It's very complicated for the most part. There are a lot of different aspects depending on how you get divorced, whether you have kids, what your you know assets looked like. There are just a million things. And generally, when people are getting divorced, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. But we know because we've been there. So mm-hmm. we get it. So we're trying to help people feel empowered and prepared for when they do find the experts that they need. They know what questions to ask. They know what information they're probably going to have to give. They have the basics to get started. That's Mm. our purpose. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I have two husbands. (laughs) They was my husband. As do I. (laughs) Jessica does too. Right. All right. Well, beautiful. And Mm. after my first divorce, I lost 170 pounds, literally, in the form of that man. Oh, (laughs) Right. You're shedding the like stress I, I and the I felt angst. lighter. I felt yes. much lighter afterwards. So I lost right. 170 pounds just like that overnight. And I had a divorce party after my first divorce. Okay. We're all about One of that. my oldest girlfriends ended up wearing another girlfriend's bra over her ears at some point <laughs> during the party. So, so let's talk, ladies, about your friendship, because I think it's really important to kind of underscore the power of the connection that the two of you had to take you through that rite of passage, the rite of passage of divorce. But also, I want to talk in terms of the decision to go into business with one another. So why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, how long have you been friends? You know, what are the highlights of your friendship? You know, sometimes people look at one another and they say, friends, should we go into business? And it's like, yeah, probably not because we may end up getting divorced, right? So I'd love to hear a little bit about your friendship and about that decision to go into business together. So Jess, why don't you? Yes, I will start. (laughs) He loves to tell this story. So TH and I are connected because my first husband and TH were best friends in high school. So I met my husband in college. So they were two years older. So when I got to college, he and I had met and I kept hearing about his best friend, TH, 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 TH. So she comes up to our school to visit for a party and I see her and I go running over to her and I'm like, oh my God, you're TH. And she literally looks at me like I'm a speck of dirt on the bottom of a shoe. And she's like, where's Darren? So I spoke to Darren afterwards and I'm like, that's TH? What a bitch. Like she was so unfriendly. The story continues as she'll explain that he had not, while he had told me all about her, he had not told her anything about me. So she was not expecting me to like run up and accost her at a party. Fast forward a few years, we all had graduated college. We all lived in New York City and Tate was with her soon to be husband. We all got engaged within a month of each other. We got married within a month of each other. We were all four best friends. Tate and I were best friends. She and Darren had been best friends. The two guys were best friends. We traveled together. We did all the things together. Tate and her husband had kids a little before we did, but our my first child, my son, and TH's third child, her son, were born a week apart. I mean, we just were going through everything together. But one thing that we do always like to say is that despite how close you may be with someone, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. So we did not know very like intimate details about specific things that neither of us were either prepared to talk about, knew to talk about, or anything like that. Then 13 years later, 
we've both found out within a week of each other about our husband's infidelities. And part of that included them going away together on trips that they had told us were guys trips. And we were like, well, we, I was like, oh my God, that sounds so great. You should, you know, have a great time. But really they were taking their girlfriends away together. They were double dating with their other women. It wasn't so, pretty. Right. Ooh. So obviously nothing was expected. And we were also on the younger side. I mean, I was 36. Teach was 38 when we were getting divorced. Our fr- We didn't have friends that were getting divorced yet. We were really the first ones to go through it. Mm. So in some ways we didn't really have anywhere else to turn. Mm. But at the same time, the analogy that I always use is if you have a new infant and people ask you, how's the baby? And they really just want to hear it good. But if you have a friend who also has a new infant, then you're like, well, how many ounces did it drink today? How many poopy diapers did you change? Mm -hmm. How many hours did they sleep through the night? It was all of those specific, specific details that we had each other to talk about and commiserate over. Other people, it may have seemed like we were complaining about our situations and it wasn't. It's just discussion. But you need to have someone who understands that. And we were literally in the exact same place at the exact same time. Mm. So we were so fortunate and we would talk about how lucky we were back then and how, you know, nobody else has this. Hmm. Obviously not unplanned, but how lucky are we and what can we do? Should we do a radio show? How can we pay it forward to other people by being able to have a platform where people can talk and commiserate and collaborate and ask opinions where people are just supporting them in a positive way and not making them feel like they're just bitching and moaning all the time about what's going on in their lives at that point. So in terms of the friendship, that's how it all came about. TH and I joke, we got each other in the divorce. I I was going to say, you divorced him and kept her. (laughs) That's right. That's exactly right. In terms of the business, I'll let TH talk more about that. I don't know that it was really a question or a concern. All right. Well, it's always a concern. Minor. It's always a concern. I've always heard that it's not something that you do. It's not good business. Yes. To go into business with friends and going into business with family is already, you know, a situation. My dad used to say, don't Don't shit where you eat. 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 Don't shit where you eat. That's what he used to say. (laughs) But what's really great about my friendship with Jessica and our friendship is, as everyone knows, you have friends for different purposes, Mm -hmm. right? This is a great friend to go out with and just BS with all night. This is a great friend to go to, like, I've got an emergency. And these are toxic people who over the years you're going to get rid of in your life because you're able to decipher what's good and what's noise and what lifts you up and what just keeps you in that pit of pain. Jessica and I really listen to each other really well. And I have to say that wasn't one of my top skills for many years. I'm a fixer, not a listener. I just, you say one word, I'm already 10 steps ahead of you. I've got it planned. I got it solved. We're already there. I don't even know what's wrong. But going through a divorce, everything slows down. Everything goes in like a weird speed. And for me, I was in an emotionally abusive marriage. I was not recognizable in terms of my personality and who I am as a person and have been most of my life. So I was kind of figuring that out. And Jessica just listened. There was no fixing. There was no changing. There was just listening and zipping it up. So by the way, that's really good advice for anyone out there. (laughs) Just listen, maybe give a hug, but don't say anything. No judgment. All right, so, I'm going to stop you, T. Okay. because we do have to take a quick break. But sure. when we come back on the other side, we'll talk more about the decision to go into business with one another and what you've created and how you're serving people now. OK, Great. awesome. Great. Right now, though, we could be smart women. We could use your help. If you're enjoying this show and want us to stay on the air, please consider making a donation at www.wickedlysmartwomen.com. We'd also like to ask you to share with your lovely lady friends who you think might benefit from our content. And in particular, your lovely lady friends who are either in divorce, considering divorce, or on just on the other side of divorce, this particular episode would be great for them to be listening to. 
please help a gal out and let your sisters, mothers, daughters, friends, and colleagues know about the show so we can serve them too. I do want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We are welcoming thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. We're now in 93 countries. I just printed out my new country list the other day. And we are going to say a shout out this week to our listeners in Norway, Greece, and Venezuela. And we will be right back with T.H. Irwin and Jessica Klingbaum in just a moment. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by Women in Transition, Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your wealthy life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. All right, we are back and we are here with a TH and Jessica. They are the X experts and they have a website called xexperts.com, E-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S uh, dot com, which we will have for you in the show notes. We highly recommend that you go over there and check that out. If you are one of the 42 percenters who are in the population who are in the process of divorce at this point. So ladies, let's talk about what we started to talk about at the beginning uh, on the other half of the break there, which was the decision to go into business together. Like where did the vision come from? Who approached who? Did you make an agreement with one another in writing? Or did you just put balls to the wall and get going on getting everything set up? Talk about the business piece and also talk about Exactly, specifically, and pre- precisely what your vision is for what this business is going to do for people. I think that the original idea, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know that one of us specifically can take the credit. I think it was a lot of discussions early on while we were going through our divorces, again, kind of how lucky we were. And there are so many people out there that are just like us that don't have someone to turn to and be able to have these conversations. And wouldn't it be great if we could do something where we were out there talking about our experiences and sharing what we're going through so that people would know that you're going to make it too. There's a friend of mine that I had from a long time ago from CBS who had gotten divorced several years before we did. And I love her. She's such a strong woman. She's amazing. She's one of my closest friends. And in a weird way, when I was getting divorced, like I kept thinking to myself, well, if she could make it through, I can too. So I think that just knowing that other people have been where you've been, her relationship was totally different than my marriage and probably very different also than TH's, but it's not even, it doesn't, not everyone is exactly the same, but just knowing that people have had similar experiences bonds you together, right? So you meet someone now, if I meet someone now and they've been divorced, it's like we have an immediate bond. Mm -hmm. We, We get each other, right? We've been through a similar experience, a life altering experience that not everyone else has been through. So I think the idea just sort of percolated between the two of us for a while. And as TH mentioned, like her divorce took a lot longer than mine. So in the beginning, even though we thought it was a great idea to create something like X experts, we decided not to because TH needed a little bit of a break. She was already living at 24 seven for four years. And we just kind of shelved it. And we're like, you know, okay, it just sort of is what it is. And it would kind of pop up every now and then over the years. And then finally, at this point, I mean, I'm going to say I feel like a year and a half to two years ago, just before COVID really started, is when TH came to me and said, I think we should really look into this now. I think we should get started. And my background in media didn't really, I don't have a lot of business background per Mm -hmm. se, but TH did. 
She has her MBA. She went to business school. She developed and created this entire experiential marketing group at a huge media company. And she has a lot of that business experience. So I kind of probably would have just gone along with whatever. But Teach, thank God, was like, look, we really need to do this right. We need to create an LLC. We need to have whatever the documents are called. It just so happens my second husband- Agreement. (laughs) Operating agreement. My second husband was a corporate lawyer. So he's our lawyer. And so- He drew stuff. Oh, actually, no, we used someone else for that, for the operating agreement initially. But Leo reviews everything for us. So we redid do it right. We decided amongst the two of us how much money did we want to put in, which Mm -hmm. at this point is a fraction of what we thought the total costs would be. And we split the expenses equally. We Mm -hmm. put money into our business account. Teach can talk a little bit more about it, but I feel like, yes... Going into business with a friend or family generally is not a good idea, but I don't, for me, I I haven't had any, any thoughts since we've gotten started of like, oh, I, this might not work. Like we're so on the same page and our experiences and our backgrounds are so complementary. They're different, but so complementary that we kind of have just fallen into the right niche for what we need to do for X experts. Mm-hmm. One plus one equals 11. That's right. <laughs> and 11 is one of my lucky numbers. Though. Mine too. <laughs> yes, 100%. We complement each other. We share this bond of this experience that we continue to go through. You continue to grow every single day of your life, especially if you have your eyes open and look and see what's happened and how far you've come. Try not to make those mistakes again. We also really respect one another. If Mm -hmm. Jessica calls me out on something, I don't take offense to it. Mm -hmm. This is for the greater good Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. This is not personal. You're not a bitch. I'm not a whatever. Like we are here to make this so big. Mm. And, and that is the goal. And our passion is leading the way and, and really just being able to call each other out without any friction, I think is huge Mm. and our eyes on the prize. So let's talk about the prize. So let's talk. So you have created Mm xexperts.com. Let's be real specific about exactly what people will find sure. when they go there. And if you'd like, if there's any feedback that you've already received from people who have been engaged with your body of work that you want to share and celebrate, we'd love to hear that too. As with any traumatic event, right? You could be the smartest person with all the degrees, but your brain is not functioning. It's not processing. It's just, you can't even speak. So we wanted to create a very simple website that was painfully easy to navigate and absorb the information. We have also created information. So let's say we're meeting with an attorney, okay? We will do a podcast with that attorney, video and audio. So for people who like to watch it, they can watch it. They want to listen to it, they can listen to it. We then create a transcript. You want to read, read the transcript. And then we also have an article or blog that accompanies the podcast. It's not exactly the same as the transcript, but we have provided the information in ways that work for people to meet them where they are. They're going to come to me and I don't want like a holy crap moment. You go to other websites and their directory listings, the font's really small. It's a little bit scary. It's kind of like being in your lawyer's office. That is not what we want. So what they will find are five buckets, my divorce, my wallet, my family, my stuff, and probably the most important one is myself. Mm. You will also on our website have links to the podcast. So that's the main hub for us right now. Mm. And every the ecosystem around it is there, but everything is connected. Beautiful. We also have a newsletter called What I Wish I Knew. Mm. That's where the real life experts come into play because Angel, your story might resonate with somebody else, but Mm. ours might not. Mm. So we've recruited great, ex-experts who are real life experts, men and women, Mm. to tell their stories, what I wish I knew. I mean, wouldn't you be happy to know that like when you were going into divorce with your husbands? I would have. And also for anyone going through this, we also know there's like one degree of separation. 
If you're not personally going through it, I bet you have a friend, a family, parent, colleague, someone's going through this. Mm -hmm. So this is something you can share as a resource. And ultimately, we want to be synonymous with the word divorce. We are working on an app, which is launching in the first quarter of next year, that will bring the community engagement component, support, safety. It is not on social media. And that will also house live events for further education. Mm-hmm. So the last thing that I really want to address is that there's the business side, which is really a hot minute. Even me, four years, we talked to somebody yesterday, nine years. That's the business. 80%, I bet, plus is the myself and the emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't stop. And the, the greatest day for me, one of them, I have three kids, was the day they stamped and said, you're divorced. But then you know what? My lawyer doesn't care about me anymore. That's My right. financial advisor is gone. That's right. Like who's left? Who's got my back? Jessica. We've got your back. <laughs> That's right. So Jessica's got my back. <laughs> yeah. So we've got your back for the greater good. That's what the community piece is for, for everyone to have an opportunity to pay it forward. And we're creating the environment for that to be successful and continue to move forward. That's really our, our goal is to keep you moving forward. Beautiful. And I just want to add on with one this, minute, ladies. So <laughs> just with the app, just that, you know, we chose to not do it on Facebook as a Facebook group, just because there are so many people concerned about privacy issues. But also a lot of times the tone of those things can turn toxic. So one of our huge mantras is we are positive energy all the way. So we want people to be able to share their stories. We're not looking for people to just dump and unload toxicity everywhere. Mm. We just want people to be able to engage and interact in a conversation. So you feel like you're having this experience that you can share with other people and that you're get gleaning information from people who know what they're talking about. Fantastic. Well, we could talk for a long time, ladies. <laughs> we really, really Well, maybe could. we'll do it again. Maybe you'll be a real <laughs> life expert do it again Because you're my first two people, two guests at once. So that was a little stretch for me as well. And I want to thank you so much for coming today. I want to thank you so much for following the calling that you got to serve in this way in the community. And I want to encourage our listeners from all over the world to go to xexperts.com and check out what TH and Jessica are cooking and avail yourself of the support that is available to you there. Please. Because yeah, why not? Right. One of the things that I've learned is the most important thing to do is to ask for help, especially when you don't know what you don't know. And so That's right. ask for help and, uh, and find it in places that are trustworthy and positive. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, we are at the end listeners. We do love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's show by calling into our listener line. We'll have that for you in the show notes, or you can send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you and you are wonderful (laughs) women. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angel. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.